Hi! Can you believe it? We've made it to the end of our Beatrix Potter Tea Time Book Club. We've had eight weeks of so much fun with Beatrix Potter. We've read about Peter Rabbit, Benjamin Bunny, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, Jemima Puddle Duck, the Flopsy Bunnies. Let's see, who else was there? Tom Kitten, Jeremy Fisher, and Mrs. Tittlemouse. We've read the stories, we've written poems, we've gone over the tools that make them fun, such as alliteration, onomatopoeia, metaphors, similes. That brings us to this week's activity. The activity this week was to go on a scavenger hunt for all the items listed on the activity sheet. And once those items are found, you can write a rhyme about each of the items and put that in your notebook. Did you know that Beatrix Potter wrote a collection of rhymes called Apley Dapley's Nursery Rhymes? A rhyme is when words share the same sound, such as hot and pot, but there are many different types of rhymes. One of the most common types of rhyme is end rhyme, which is when the rhyming words are placed at the end of the lines, such as, in somebody's cupboard, there's everything nice. Cake, cheese, jam, biscuits, all charming for mice. So my girls went on a scavenger hunt, some older kids, hid the items, and then my girls came out with empty baskets, and they searched high and low for all the items on the list. After the scavenger hunt, they went fishing for the fish that were in the Mr. Jeremy Fisher activity. And they found all sorts of fish like this around the yard. And with their fishing poles or long sticks, they went fishing. And it was a little bit harder than they anticipated. Modern art. <laughs> we've had such a good time in our live poetry tea times with friends. Friends that we've had for years and we've also made new friends. During our week eight live tea time, we focused on a very special mouse. It was Mrs. Tittlemouse. And here are some fun facts we shared about mice during our live tea time. These are listed in the Beatrix Potter Book Club Organizer. Mice in the wild eat grains, fruits, sometimes insects. Their tails can grow as long as their bodies. And they have poor eyesight, but make up for this with their excellent sense of smell. 
If you're interested in the Beatrix Potter Book Club Organizer, go to letslearnkids.com. And in this, you will find lots of pictures. It's just loaded with pictures, helpful tips, facts about the mice, or about animals in general, and different things you can do with your kids. Activities, places for notes, and of course there are shopping lists in the back. So again, you can find that at letslearnkids.com. And I'll tell you what we had for our snack. Our snack for our live tea time included cream cheese and cucumber sandwiches, brownies, hard boiled eggs, tea. Instead of reading the story like I usually do, the story was shared by these four. Would you like to hear Christopher, Jaden, Juliana, and Christina recite the tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse? Here they are. My name is Christopher and I play the part of the narrator. My name is Jaden and I played the part of Mr. Jackson. Hi, I'm Juliana and I played the part of Mrs. Tittlemouse. Christina and I play Babberty the Bumble the Bee zzz, zzz, and the Spider. Zzz. The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there was a wood mouse, and her name was Mrs. Tittlemouse. She lived in a bank under a hedge. Such a funny house! There were yards and yards of sandy passages leading to storerooms and nut cellars and seed cellars, all amongst the roots of the hedge. There was a kitchen, a parlor, a pantry, and a larder. Mrs. Tittlemouse was a most terribly tidy, particular little mouse, always sweeping and dusting the soft, sandy floors. Sometimes, a beetle lost its way in the passages. Shoo, shoo! Little dirty feet, said Mrs. Tittlemouse, clattering her dustpan. And one day, a little old woman ran up and down in a red, spotty cloak. Your house is on fire, by the ladybird. Fly away home to your children. Another day, a big, fat spider came in to shelter from the rain. Beg your pardon, but is this not Miss Mu Muffet's? Go away, you bold, bad spider, leaving ends of cobweb all over my nice, clean house. She bundled the spider out at a window. He let himself down the hedge with a long, thin bit of string. Mrs. Tittlemouse went on her way to a distant storeroom to fetch cherry stones and thistledown seed for dinner. All along the passage, she sniffed and looked at the floor. I smell the smell of honey. Is it the cow's lips outside in the hedge? I am sure I can see marks of little dirty feet. She met Babbity Bumble. <coughs> said, the mum, said the bumblebee. Mrs. Tittlemouse looked at her severely. She wished that she had a broom. Good day, Babbity Bumble. I should be glad to buy some beeswax. But what are you doing down here? Why do you always come in at the window and say, zzz, bzz, bzz. Tittle, Mrs. Tittlemouse began to get cross. <laughs> replied Babbity Bumble in a peevish squeak. She sidled down a passage and disappeared into a storeroom, which had been used for acorns. Mrs. Tittlemouse had eaten the acorns before Christmas. The storeroom ought to have been empty, but it was full of untidy dry moss. Mrs. Tittlemouse began to pull out the moss. Three or four other bees put their heads out and buzzed fiercely. I am not in the habit of letting lodgings. This is an intrusion, said Mrs. Tittlemouse. I will have them turned out. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder who will help me. Buzz, whiz, whiz. I will not have Mr. Jackson. He never wipes his feet. 
Mrs. Tittlemouse decided to leave the bees until after dinner. When she got back to the parlor, she heard someone coughing in a fat voice, and there sat Mr. Jackson himself. He was sitting all over a small rocking chair, twiddling his thumbs and smiling with his feet on the fender. He lived in a drain below the hedge, in a very dirty, wet ditch. How do you do, Mr. Jackson? Dearie me, you have got very wet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Tittlemouse. I'll sit a while and uh, dry myself. Said, Mrs. said Mr. Jackson. He sat and smiled, and the water dripped off his coattails. Mrs. Tittlemouse went round with a mop. He sat such a while that he had to be asked if he would take some dinner. First, she offered him t cherry stones. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Tittlemouse. No teeth, no teeth, no teeth, said Mr. Jackson. He opened his mouth most unnecessarily wide. He certainly had not a tooth in his head. Then she offered him thistledown seed. Tiddly, widdly, widdly. Poof, 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 said Mr. Jackson. He blew the thistle down all over the room. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Lamas. Now what I really, really should like would be a, a little dish of honey. I am afraid I have n not got any, Mr. Jackson. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, Mr. Lamas. Said the smiling Mr. Jackson. I can smell it. That is why I came to call. Mr. Jackson rose ponderously from the table and began to look into the cupboards. Mrs. Tittlemouse followed him with a dishcloth to wipe his large wet footmarks off the parlor floor. When he had convinced himself that there was no honey in the cupboards, he began to walk down the passage. Indeed, indeed, you will stick fast, Mr. Jackson. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, Mr. Tittlemouse. First he squeezed into the pantry. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, no honey? No honey, Mr. Tittlemouse. There were three creepy crawly people hiding in the plate rack. Two of them got away, but the littlest one got caught. Then he squeezed into the larder. Miss Butterfly was tasting the sugar, but she flew away out of the window. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, Miss Tittlemouse. You seem to have plenty of visitors. And without any invitation said Mrs. Thomasina Tittlemouse. They went along the sandy passage. Tiddly, widdly. Buzz, whiz, whiz. He met Babbity round a corner and snapped her up and put her down again. I do not like bumbly bees. They're all over with bristles, said Mr. Jackson, wiping his mouth with his coat sleeve. Get out, you nasty cog, shrieked Babbity Bumble. I should go distract scolded Mrs. Tittlemouse. She shut herself up in the nut cellar while Mr. Jackson pulled out the bee's nest. He seemed to have no objection to stings. When Mrs. Tittlemouse ventured to come out, everybody had gone away. But the untidiness was something dreadful. Never did I see such a mess. Smears of honey and moss and thistle down and marks of big and little dirty feet all over my nice clean floor. She gathered up the moss and the remains of the beeswax. Then she went out and fetched some twigs to partly close up the front door. I will make it too small for Mr. Jackson. She fetched soft soap and flannel and a new scrubbing brush from the storeroom, but she was too tired to do any more. First, she, sm she fell asleep in her chair, and then she went to bed. Will I, I, will I ever be tidy again? Next morning, she got up very early and began a spring cleaning, which lasted a fortnight. She swept and scrubbed and dusted, and she rubbed up the furniture with beeswax and polished her little tin spoons. When it was all beautifully neat and clean, she gave a party to five other little mice without Mr. Jackson. He smelt the party and came up the bank, but she could not squeeze in at the door. So they handed him out acorn cupfuls of honeydew through the window, and he was not at all offended. He sat outside in the sun and said, Tiddly, widdly, widdly, your very good health, Mrs. Tittlemouse. The end.